Hello everyone, this is London Calling and I am very pleased to be able to welcome you back to a brand new edition of Draw With Rob, with me, Rob Bidolf. There I am, holding a couple of dinosaur eggs. Now you might know me from books like this one, it's called Odd Dog Out. It's all about a colourful sausage dog who doesn't fit in with all the other sausage dogs. Or maybe you've seen this one, it's called Wide Awake. It's part of my Dinosaur Juniors series, all about this chap here who can't get to sleep at night and it's a really good one for bedtime, that. Now then, let's get my piece of paper because today we are going to be doing a drawing together. Is that straight? I think that's pretty straight. Now then, what are we gonna be drawing, I hear you ask? Well, I'm gonna give you a little clue. The drawing is gonna be from my very first book. And you know what? I won a prize for this book. I'm very proud of this. It's the Waterstones Children's Book Prize a few years ago. Look, can you see my name? There's my name there. And this book was called Blown Away. And it's all about this chap here called Penguin Blue, who goes out flying this kite here on a very windy day. And he ends up getting blown away. Look, there's the windy day. He gets blown away. Look, it takes him right off the ground and his friends here, they try and grab on and help him, but they all end up getting blown away too. This is Wilbur the seal. Look, all of them get blown away. Can you see that? Look, across the sea. And they end up in a place that penguins aren't usually found. <gasps> they end up in the jungle and they have to think of a very clever way of getting back home again. But listen, I thought it might be nice today if we drew a picture of Penguin Blue. So, this is how it works. In case you haven't seen any of these videos before, you need a piece of paper and a pencil, like I've got here. And I am gonna do some drawing on the paper. And I'm gonna do it a little tiny bit at a time. And then uh, what I want you to do is watch what I do, then pause your video, and then I want you to draw exactly what I draw. Then start your video again, I'll draw a bit more. Pause it, you can draw. Then I will draw, you will draw, I will draw, you will draw, I will draw, you will draw. And hopefully we're gonna end up with something. It's pretty good. That is the theory. The reason we do it like that, lots of people say to me that, that they don't think that they're very good at drawing, but I say that everybody can draw. It's just a question of knowing what order to do the drawing in, okay? And hopefully this is gonna prove our point. So here we go. Right, I want you to start with a very simple shape, but I'm gonna say something before we start. We need to keep this over to this side of our piece of paper. Because we're going to start our drawing down here, but our drawing is going to spread over to this side. So make sure you don't start over here in the middle because you'll run out of room otherwise. So over on the left hand side, I want you to draw this sort of like an L shape, but it's going to be at an angle like that. OK, so an L shape at an angle. Then I want you to put your pencil at the top of your L shape. We're going to come along here like that, probably about to there. So you're going to go a bit further along from the point that we started at. Okay. The next thing to do, we're going to put our pencil down here, the very point that we started. We're going to curve our line upwards and we're going to stop about there. So we're going to stop short of going all the way up to join the other line. Then we're going to curve around in a shape like this and head up towards that line, but we're not going to join it. We're going to just stop about there, just past it. So there's a little tiny, can you see that little tiny gap in between? And then I want you to draw, join that up like that. And you can sort of start to see our penguin take shape already, can't you? A nice, simple shape. Okay then. The next thing we're going to do is up in this corner of our shape, in this area, we are going to draw, it's sort of like a teardrop shape, but it's an upside down curvy teardrop. It's almost like a backwards comma, I think. That's what I always think when I draw it. So we're going to draw that shape there. Then underneath that shape, I want you just to draw a straight line across like that. So easy this one so far, isn't it? Okay, next, another strange shape that we're gonna draw in this section of our penguin. It's sort of gonna be like a long, another long sort of teardrop shape, I guess, but like that, sort of like, it looks a bit like a caterpillar or something crawling down the inside of that shape. 
okay? And then once you've done that, I want you to color in around those shapes, but we're gonna leave this area white, okay? So let's see, I might do a bit of fast forwarding now, okay? You love my super speedy coloring in, don't you? Okay, here we go, ready? One, two, three. Okay, so there we go. Really starting to take shape now. Now our penguin needs some feet. Now, my the way that I draw penguins' feet is so easy. It's crazy how easy it is. Basically, each leg and foot consists of three lines. That's it, okay? I'm gonna show you how. So the first one we're gonna do over this side, so I want you to put your pencil down here at the bottom. And we're just gonna draw a straight line down like that. That is our first line. The second line, about halfway down that line, just draw another line just coming off diagonally like that. That's our second line. And our third and final line for this foot is gonna be coming down diagonally the other way. There we go, one, two, three, easy penguin foot. Let's draw another one here. This time I'm gonna do this at a different angle because I'm gonna do him sort of with one foot in the air. There we go, three little lines. Easy peasy. Now then, let me see. I'm gonna take my black pencil here. I am using a few different colored pencils here, but you know what? This drawing will work if you just use one pencil, if you like one color. But because I'm gonna do mine in sort of a few different colors, you can sort of see a way of doing it this way if you want to do it, but you can do it any way you like, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm taking my black, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna take a black pen. I'm gonna mix it up. We're gonna have a bit of pen, a bit of pencil. My black pen, and I am gonna draw a little circle right in the middle of that funny sort of backwards comma shape. And this is gonna be our penguin's eye. So there's our circle and I'm gonna do our penguin. He's gonna be looking up towards this side of the drawing because remember I said our drawing is gonna stretch across the page. So I'm gonna do a smaller dot, but I'm gonna do it over to that side of his eye because that's the direction that he's looking in. Now then, this is quite a fun bit. You might wanna do this with colors. If you've got a yellow pencil, this is a cool thing to do because we are going to start to shade his tummy. Now, penguins' tummies, they're mainly white, but what happens at the top of their tummies, they sort of go a bit yellowy and a bit orangey. So what I want you to do is just take your yellow pencil, start colouring right at the top and then go down, but gradually just press more and more gently so it just fades out like that. So you get a little fade. And then maybe if you've got an orange pencil too, you could just add a little bit of orange at the top like that, just to make it a little bit darker. And look, we sort of get a nice little fady penguin tummy thing going on. Yeah, do you like that? It works pretty well, doesn't it? Now then, I'm gonna take my yellow pencil again, and I am gonna color these two funny shapes. That one there, oh, I've got a little bit of blue in there, doesn't really matter, does it? It's quite nice when you have these little happy accidents sometimes, I think, just add to the authenticity of the drawing. I'm gonna color in the eye, the area around the eye, and look, look at that. That penguin's pretty much there. What we need to do now is some little penguin wings. And to be honest, the way that I draw them is a bit more like arms, because I draw them in. You remember, I think I might have said this to you before, but illustrators like me, we're really lazy. We like to do things as simply as possible. Not, not every illustrator is as lazy as I am, but I am, you know, I am pretty lazy, so I'm gonna draw my penguin's arms like this, just a simple line. The first one, I'm gonna put just below where his tummy starts here, and I'm gonna come across in a line slightly curved to about there, like that, okay? And then the other arm is gonna start from just here, the same sort of height there, and it's just gonna join up with that arm there, because our penguin is gonna be holding something. What's he holding? I hear you ask. <gasps> You'll have to wait and see. Right, I've taken a red pencil now, but just remember, you don't have to do this in all different colors. You can do it in one color if that's all you've got to hand. Right, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna draw a little red circle, like that. I'm gonna leave a hole in the middle, just like that. Then, on this side of the circle, I'm gonna draw a tiny little red square like that. And then on the end of that square, I'm going to draw a sort of curvy line, like that. Okay. Now, when I go into schools and things, I always say, right, what do you think penguins holding? And they always say a fish, because penguins, they eat fish, I think, don't they? So they always think I'm drawing a fish, but I am not 
drawing a fish. This might give you a bit more of a clue. I'm gonna take, I'll keep moving my paper down. I'm gonna take my black pen again for this and I'm just gonna draw one, two, three black lines there. Any guesses? What do you think it is? Still not sure. Okay, maybe you'll get it now. Right, we're gonna draw a long line now. I'm gonna put my pen here. I am gonna draw a line that heads all the way over the page like that, and I'm gonna stop it just about there, okay? Any guesses? Any guesses? Still no guesses. Okay, let's see if you get it from this. I'm now gonna take my black pencil. And over here, I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap between the end of that line and what I'm gonna draw now, but what I want you to do is a great big diamond shape. Slightly longer at the bottom than at the top like that. I bet you can all guess what we're drawing now. That's right, a kite. We are drawing a kite. Okay, so there is our kite, there is the string. Now then, we need to attach the string to our kite. This is how we do this bit, okay? I'm gonna do this with my pen again. I am gonna draw a line that joins the top and the bottom of the kite, like that. I'm gonna draw another line that goes across the middle of our kite, like that. And then remember I said to leave a little gap there. What I want you to do, put your pen on the end of that line. We're gonna go up a bit and we're gonna stop in the middle of that line. And then we're gonna go down a bit and we're gonna stop in the middle of that line. And look, our kite is now attached to the kite line. Now, what does a kite need down here? It needs a tail, doesn't it? So what I want you to draw, you can do this as long or as short as you like, but I want you to do a lovely wavy curly line. And look, I'm gonna swirl mine up at the end, just like that, because I like drawing swirls. You might have seen the way that I write my name in the R of Rob, I do a little swirl, I really like doing that. Okay, so there's our kite's tail. What does a kite's tail have? It has lots of ribbons. Now then, I've got a good way of doing kite ribbons to make it easier, because lots of people think it's a bit fiddly and a bit difficult. But if you just draw an X in the middle, so the middle of the X is going over where your kite string is, and then you just draw up, join up, sorry, each end of the X like that. Look, you have a kite ribbon. And then once you get the hang of that, you can do them pretty quickly. Look at this. X, join up, 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 X, join up. One more down here, I think, X, join up. And look, there we go. Our penguin is flying a kite. Now, do you remember my favorite tip of all time? Yes, it's the shadow one. I love the shadow tip. This time, I'm not gonna do it black. I'm gonna use my light blue pen here, but I am just gonna do just a little bit of scribble around my penguin's feet like that. And look, it makes it look like he's standing on the ground. Now, this is the fun bit where you can do what you like because we're gonna color in our kite. Now, something that I thought might be a nice idea because I have been getting messages from people who are joining in with Draw With Rob from all over the world. So what I thought might be nice is we could, we could make our kites into a flag and that flag could be the country where we are or where we come from. So I'm in London in, in the United Kingdom, so I think I'm gonna make my kite a Union Jack, but maybe you're drawing from France or Spain, or I've had people joining me from New Zealand and South Africa and America and all sorts of places. Why don't you color in your kite the flag of the country you're in so that when I get sent them, we can see where, they're all, where everyone's drawing from. So that'd be quite a nice idea, I think. So that's what I'm gonna do. Or you don't have to, you can just do your kite with a nice pattern, rainbow patterns, or maybe some hearts or stars, whatever you like. There's no rules to this, okay? So I'm now gonna go into super speed mode while I do my kite. Here we go, on your marks. Get set, go. Okay, so we're very close to finishing now. The last thing that I like to do is, you need wind, don't you, to keep a kite up in the air. So this is how I draw wind. You draw a line coming across like that, 
one of my nice little swirls. And we're gonna draw the same there, swirling up. And then in the middle of those two, we'll do another one, going closer to the kite, a little swirl, and a little swirl. And there we go, our kite is being blown by the wind. And Penguin Blue here looks like he's having a lovely time. So there we go. Last thing of all, we need to sign our pictures, don't we? There we go, my signature. And look, our drawing is finished. Now then, don't forget, I love to see all of your drawings. So if you can get somebody to take a picture of your drawings and then post it on the social media feed that you are watching this on, if that's Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, and remember to include the hashtag draw with Rob. And I'm going to put all of my Twitter names and Facebook name and all that kind of stuff at the end so you can find me. And I promise you, I really try and look through every single one. And I try and like your pictures and comment on your pictures. And then we randomly select lots of the pictures to put up in a grid at the end of the day. So will your picture make the grid? Oh, fingers crossed. But listen, I hope you've had a nice time drawing Penguin Blue with me today. It's been lovely to talk to you. I want you to have a brilliant rest of your day. And I am going to see you very soon for another Draw with Rob.